Hi everyone, this is Kim Alia, and welcome to a special presentation on the McRepertory and ReferenceWorks homeopathic software programs. So during this next one hour presentation, what I'm going to essentially do is just review some of the unique features of both McRepertory and ReferenceWorks. Uh, this is not a training uh, presentation. If you want to learn more about actually how to use the programs, what I would suggest is you could either go to the Synergy Homeopathic website and go to their YouTube channel where you'll find many different recordings and presentations, or you can go to wholehealthnow.com and if you go to the home page here and then you go ahead and click on the software tab located right over here, you'll see on this particular page at the bottom left hand corner there's a little link that says software video tutorials and if you click on that you'll find a number of video tutorials that I've conducted and also that have been done with some other practitioners and well as well over the last couple of years uh, and there's quite a number of them they're each run about 90 minutes and they cover various facets of how the program works so again if you want a, a real training presentation, I would recommend that you go and watch these instruct instructional videos that can be accessed either at the SynergyHomeopathic.com website or at WholeHealthNow.com. Okay, if uh, people have additional questions about anything that I present tonight or would like to order any of the particular modules or items or books that I discuss or don't have the software and like to purchase it, uh, they can contact me at my email address, which is kim at synergy, S-Y-N-E-R-G-Y, homeopathic.com. So kim at synergy, homeopathic.com. Again, uh, tonight's presentation is going to be just a quick review of some of the unique capabilities and features and benefits of both the McRepertory and ReferenceWorks software programs. We're going to go ahead and start with McRepertory. Essentially, the McRepertory reference works is divided into two parts. You've got McRepertory, which contains all of the different repertories. There's many different repertories that are available to you. And then we'll also look at the reference works program, which is essentially a collection of books, primarily Materia Medica, but there are other books as well, such as philosophy, books on therapeutics, uh, books on um, nutrition, and other various aspects of homeopathic practice. Uh, you can see right now that I'm using the Complete 2015 Repertory. If you look in the upper left-hand corner of my screen, you can see it says Complete 2015. But I can switch to different repertories. If you look at the bottom right-hand corner of this window, you'll see a little icon. And if I click on it, it shows me all the different repertories that I have available to me. And here you can see a whole listing of different repertories. You may or may not have all of these repertories, depending on which version of the program you've purchased. Uh, just to quickly review, uh, you can see here we've got uh, the Allen repertory. That's the repertory from Timothy Field Allen's Encyclopedia of Pure Materia Medica. That's the 12-volume compendium of all the provings that happened up into the, about 1885. Uh, we've got the Bach uh, Mind Repertory. We have the uh, Berninghausen Innominate Repertory. This is the repertory that was actually uh, published by Clemens von Maria Berninghausen in 1846, and there was an English translation which was released in that same year. We don't know who the actual author was. There are some suspicions that the author was Johann Ernest Staff. Staff was one of the primary students of Samuel Hahnemann, Gross and Staff were the two individuals, if you remember, who Hahnemann first shared the idea of the miasms, the chronic dise diseases with after 12 years of uh, intensive investigation of the concept of the miasms. And he shared that with both uh, Wilhelm Gustav Gross and Johann Ernest Staff. And Staff uh, may have been the publisher, uh, or the, the translator, English translator, of the Burning House and 1846 Therapeutic Pocketbook Repertory. You've also got the uh, Burning House and Repertory here. Actually, this is a repertory created by Cyrus Bozier in 1905. You've got Barricky's Repertory, Bozier's Synoptic Repertory, uh, many different editions of the complete. Uh, Douglas's Repertory, Isiaga's Repertory, Yar, uh, Massimo's Clinical Repertory, Marilli, Murphy's Repertory. Uh, we've got these wonderful uh, World Veterinary Repertories, which were created by Wendy Jensen and Richard Pitcairn. Those are excellent repertories for veterinary practice. Uh, and here you can see the, the most 
current iteration called the New World Veterinary Repertory. You've got Fatox Repertory. You could actually make your own repertory here. You can see it says Personal Repertory. You've got Scholten's Repertory, and you even have the uh, George Dimitriotis English translation of the 1846 Therapeutic Pocketbook Repertory. Uh, and uh, in my estimation, that's the best English translation of that repertory. You've also got a very nice repertory created by Jeremy Scher called the Q Repertory. So there's a large number of repertories to choose from. And you can actually go back and forth between these different repertories and use different rubrics from them. Sometimes you wouldn't want to do that because the uh, philosophy or organizational structure of a particular repertory would make it uh, so that you wouldn't want to combine it with other repertories. Uh, but that's really a, a, a subject for another time. Uh, just so you know, if you're in a particular uh, rubric, I, there's basically two ways that you can search for rubrics uh, in this repertory program. Uh, the first way is based on a knowledge of the structure of the repertory. Uh, the second way, and I'll show you both of these, the second way is independent of the structure. You don't, you're not concerned about the structure, and you can search for any word or any combination of words uh, in any repertory or any combination of repertories, or even all the repertories that you have in your software program. So I'm going to first start by searching through the structure of the repertory. Here you can see the all the different chapters of the complete 2015 repertory. If I want to see the names of those various chapters, I can hit the spacebar key on my keyboard and it will quickly show me the names of these various chapters. So let's say, for example, that I want to go to the rubric uh, Fear of High Places. The first question I would ask myself is what chapter is that in? And obviously the answer is it's in the mind chapter. So I can simply type on my keyboard MI and then I can hit enter or return, depending on whether you have a Windows or a Mac computer. And you'll now see that I'm in the mind section or mind chapter of the complete 2015 repertory. Now I wanted to go to fear, so I'm going to type in FE on my keyboard. And now you can see I'm at the rubric fear. And I want that to go up uh, so I can look at the sub rubrics of fear. So I'm going to hit the right arrow key on my keyboard. And now I can see all of the various sub rubrics of the uh, primary rubric fear. Now I wanted high places, so I'm going to type in HI, and now you can see I'm at the rubric mind fear high places of. And you can see to the right of where it says high places, it says 53, indicating that there are 53 remedies in that particular rubric. If I want to see those particular remedies, I can hit the spacebar key on my keyboard, and it will immediately show me all the remedies. When I let go of the spacebar key, the remedies disappear. I can also, if I want, make that permanent. I can hit uh, Command or Control R, and I can show just the first line of remedies for all the rubrics. I can hit it again. I can show all the remedies in the rubrics listed by their grade. Here you can see that the, um, the remedies that are in bold come first, then italics, then plain type. If I hit Control or Command R again, I can see the remedies in the rubrics as they would appear in the printed book. One of the fabulous things about Mac Repertory is that it's completely customizable. You can choose your own fonts, your own colors of your fonts. You can have it look with uh, like this where you have two columns, or you can have one column. Uh, you can really make it look any way you want. All of the windows can be changed in terms of their color. Uh, all the fonts can be changed. The fonts can be made larger or smaller. It's absolutely the most customizable program on the market. And uh, for people who want to tailor it for their own aesthetic preferences, I think that's a really nice uh, capability. Now, what I wanted to show you here is here I am at the rubric Fear of High Places. And if you remember, in the bottom right-hand corner, there was a little icon that showed me all the other repertories that are available to me. So I'm going to go ahead now and go to Kent's repertory. You can see that's in my list here. I'm going to select Kent's repertory. And you'll notice that when I go to Kent's repertory, I'm at the same rubric that I was in in the complete 2015 repertory. So again, this is a very nice feature. It allows me to go back and forth between the different repertories, and I can see the same rubric in each of those different repertories. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the complete 2015. I'm going to click on that little icon in the bottom right-hand corner, and I'm going to select complete 2015, and now you can see I'm back in that particular repertory. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the remedies now by hitting Control or Command R on my keyboard. And I do that so I can see more information. I can also make this window larger if I want. I can resize these windows and essentially make them look any way that I would like. Now, when I want to take a rubric 
and put it into a clipboard, all I have to do is go to that particular rubric, and then all I need to do is hit enter or return on my keyboard. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter on my keyboard, and that rubric has now been placed into clipboard A. You can see, actually, that I've got uh, up to 10 different clipboards, A, B, C, D, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So I have up to 10 different clipboards, and sometimes people ask the question, well, why, why do you need all these different clipboards? Why don't you just put all the rubrics into one clipboard? Well, the advantage of having different clipboards is that you can group your rubrics into different categories. So for example, I could put all my mind symptoms, all my mind rubrics into clipboard A. I could put my general physicals into clipboard B. I could put my food desires and aversions in clipboard C. I could put my respiratory symptoms in clipboard D. I could put my skin symptoms into clipboard 1. I could put my um, uh, digestive symptoms into clipboard 2, and so on and so forth. And I can always, if I want, analyze all of the rubrics, all the totality of the characteristic symptoms of my case, or by virtue of the fact that I've grouped the rubrics into different categories, I can analyze the case from a variety of different perspectives. In other words, maybe when I look at the totality of the characteristic symptoms in the case, none of the remedies really stand out. And I, I look there and I say, you know, none of these remedies really fit. And then I say to myself, you know, the center of pathology for this particular patient is his fears and his skin symptoms. And by virtue of the fact that I've grouped the rubrics into different categories, I can look at just the analysis of the skin and the fear symptoms of the case. And so this gives me a degree of flexibility without taking away anything from my analysis capabilities. Let's go ahead and put in another rubric. Here you can see fear of high places. I'm going to go to dogs, and all I do to do that is I just typed in dogs, so D-O-G, and now you can see I'm at fear of dogs, and I'll hit enter, and I'll put that in. And let's go actually, let me open up so you can see how it's happening in real time. Here you can see clipboard A, and I've got fear of high places and fear of dogs. And now I'm going to want cats, so I'll type in cats, oops, spelled it wrong, cats. And there you can see cats, and I'll hit enter, and that'll go in. And let's say alone, I'll type in alone, and I'll add that in. And let's say uh, dark, I'll type in dark, and I'll add that in. So you can see it's very easy. I just simply type in the first few letters of the word that I want, and I hit enter or return on my keyboard. Enter if you've got a Windows computer, return if you've got a Mac, and it goes into clipboard A. If I want my rubrics to go into clipboard B, then I simply click on clipboard B. Now you can see I've got clipboard B over here. Let's say I want to add into clipboard B uh, jealousy and suspiciousness. So now I just type in J-E-A for jealousy. I hit enter. That goes into clipboard B. And I type in S-U-S-P for suspiciousness. And I hit enter, and that goes in. Now you'll notice that in clipboard A, I've got my fear symptoms. And in clipboard B, I've got my uh, jealousy and suspicious symptoms. If I want to see them both, all I do is I hold the shift key down on my keyboard and I click on A. And now you can see that it now says at the top left hand corner, RCAB, meaning rubric clipboard A and B. And now you can see I'm looking at both the contents of clipboards A and clipboard B put together. And if I go to my analysis window, which I can do by either clicking on this little bar graph or control five is the keyboard command, you'll see that the analysis actually is of all of the rubrics that are contained in clipboards A and B. If I only want to see clipboard A, again, I could just clipboard, clipboard A, and I'll just see the analysis of clipboard A. So very easy to do. One of the nice things about McRepertory and ReferenceWorks is that they are very, very easy to use, extremely intuitive. I've used uh, many homeopathic software programs on the market and uh, in my experience, at least, these are by far and away the most intuitive and most easy to use programs on the market. And that's actually quite important because, uh, you know, in my experience, if a program is very difficult, very complicated, uh, what will happen is that most people will use 5 or 10 or maybe at the most 15% of the full functionality of the program. And they're not able to take advantage of all of the incredible features that are contained in these software applications. But because of the easy, intuitive nature of the McRepertory software, uh, in my experience, users are using 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 percent of the software's capabilities. And that's uh, really, really a, a nice capability, a nice, uh, nice benefit from a person's investment.
Now, again, let me just show you how easy it is to do this. Uh, let's say I want to take Fear of High Places and I want to make it, uh, I want to underline it three times. I simply click on Fear of High Places and I hit the number three on my keyboard and you can see now that's underlined three times. And if I want to make Fear of Dogs underlined two times, I click on Fear of Dogs and I hit the number two and now that's underlined two times. And let's say I'll take Fear of Alone and I'll underline that four times and now you can see that's underlined four times. And that immediately uh, affects my analysis over here. Now, what's nice about this is I can now go to this little um, area in the bottom left-hand corner of my window, and if I click over here on the R, you'll notice that I can limit my analysis based on how the symptoms are underlined. So maybe I only want to consider those symptoms which are underlined four times. And if I click here, you'll see that the only rubric which is now being considered in the analysis is those that are underlined. In this case, it's only one symptom that are being underlined four times. If I want to perhaps make it the three and fours, I can click that and now you can see both fear of high places and fear of alone are affecting my analysis. Maybe I want the two threes and fours and now I can do that as well. So very easy to change this around. If I want to undo a particular uh, intensity, I can simply click on the rubric like this and I can hit zero on my keyboard, and then that's eliminated. If I want to cross a rubric out, maybe I don't want to consider fear of cats for the time being, I can click on fear of cats, and I can hit the minus sign on my keyboard, and you'll see that that is now crossed out, both in the clipboard and in the analysis window, and that is no longer being considered in the repertorization. If I want to undo that, I can hit zero on my keyboard, and it undoes that. So this is all very, very easy to do, and uh, really anybody can learn this program in about four, four to six hours. You can learn the majority of the capabilities. And that's pretty amazing because it really does uh, everything that all these other powerful homeopathic software programs use. As a matter of fact, it does a number of things that no other program does. Uh, and yet uh, it's extremely, extremely easy to learn how to use. So the, the intuitiveness, the ease of use does not compromise the power of the program. You can also combine rubrics together. Perhaps I want to take fear of dogs and fear of cats and combine them. I can select them both like this. I can hit the plus key on my keyboard and I can make a new rubric called fear of dogs and cats. And then I simply click OK. And now you see I've got a new rubric, fear of dogs and cats, and I've created that. And the, the rubrics that were used to create that rubric, fear of dogs and cats, have now been crossed out. So they're no longer being considered and only this rubric is being considered. So lots of easy things to do, uh, very, very simple. Now there's another really fabulous feature that you can use uh, right from the repertorization window that is again unique to the McRepertory software. And I just love this feature. It, it really speaks directly to the most fundamental thing that we do in homeopathic practice. So there's a number of different ways that you can do this. Obviously, in a one-hour presentation, I can't show you everything that the software does, but let me show you some of the incredible highlights. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take Hyosciamus, and I'm going to simply drag it over to the key here, and I'm going to let go, and you can see that I'm now in Cleveland's Salient Materia Medica under the remedy Hyosciamus. Now I can change my Materia Medicas. I can click on the key here in the bottom right hand corner and I can switch to any of these other key notebooks. I'm going to switch it to Berkey's Materia Medica and now you can see I'm reading about Hyosciamus in Berkey's Materia Medica. But now here's the really cool part of this particular capability. I'm going to move the analysis window over here and now you can see here I am in Hyosciamus and here you can see Hyosciamus in my analysis. And if you look in the bottom left-hand corner of the keynote window, you'll see there's three buttons. There's a little button in the center that looks like an analysis graph. There's a button to the left of that which points to the left. And there's a button to the right of that which points to the right. Now, if I click on the arrow that points to the right, it's going to take me to the next remedy in my repertorization. So I'm going to click here, and you'll see I'm now in the remedy Argentum Nitricum. If I click again, I'll be in the remedy Calcarea Carbonica. If I click again, I'll be in the remedy Stramonium. If I click again, I'll be in the remedy Arsenicum, Lycopodium, and so on and so forth. In other words, it moves me through each next remedy in my repertorization, allowing me to read the salient important symptoms of that remedy. And that's essentially what we do in homeopathic practice. Remember, the purpose of repertorization is not to tell you the remedy. The purpose of repertorization is to suggest a group of remedies which are compared in the Materia Medica. So this is essentially what we do 
primarily in homeopathic practice, and the program is easily set up to allow you to do this. Now, here I am in Berkey. I'm looking at the remedy Lycopodium, and maybe I'd like to, maybe Berkey, you know, tells me some interesting stuff about Lycopodium, but, you know, it's not comprehensive enough. I'm considering Lycopodium as the best choice, but maybe I want to know more. What I can do as I can take my mouse, I can bring it over to the little button with the analysis graph here in the bottom left-hand corner. I can click on it, and now that little button that had an analysis graph on it turns to a button with a key on it. And now, if I click on the right arrow button, it doesn't take me to the next remedy in my repertorization. It takes me to other keynote books that have a description of Lycopodium. And so now you can see I'm in Bossier's Synoptic Key reading about the keynotes of Lycopodium. And if I click again, I'm in Bradford's Index. And if I click again, I'm in Profogel's Epitome. And if I click again, I'm in Buck's Materia Medica. And I click again, I'm in Burt's Characteristics and Chowdery and Clark's ABC Manual and Clark's Characteristics and Clark's Extraction. Action, and Cleveland Sale Materia Medica and Copperthwaite's textbook and so on and so forth. In other words, I can further read about Lycopodium in a variety of different books and once I'm done I can click back on the little button with the key, go back to my analysis graph and then read any other remedies that I would like. I can also, if you look in the bottom right hand corner here, there's a little eye and if I click on it, it's going to show me other information about these various remedies. Now this is not Materia Medica information. This isn't the symptoms of the remedies. It's information about the botanical grouping, taxonomical names, um, information about toxicology, common names, how it's prepared homeopathically, the botanical descriptions, the part of the plant that's used, its habitat, and so on and so forth. So again, this is very similar to uh, Franz Vermeulen's uh, it's not as comprehensive, obviously, but it's similar type of information to what you find in Franz Vermeulen's Prisma. And this is available for the remedies right from the keynote window and from other windows as well. Okay, so uh, that's the keynote window. It works really beautifully, and it allows you to uh, read the different remedies in order as they appear in your repertorization. Uh, here you can see that I've got uh, different analysis graphs that I can use, and actually you can make your own graphs, you can customize them, uh, you can change these graphs around, you can change the colors of the graphs, uh, there's all kinds of different things. I'm not going to go through and explain all these different graphs here, but um, uh, this is a very interesting one. It's an XY axis uh, where uh, the... the um, the, up, the line going vertically represents the number of rubrics, so the higher up it is, the more rubrics it covers. And then to the right, it tells you how well represented the remedy is in the repertory. So the further over to the right it is, the less well represented it is. So if you have a remedy up here in the upper right-hand corner, that means that that's a remedy which is poorly represented in the repertory, but covers a large number of symptoms in your case. And that, of course, would be a remedy that you would want to look at in your analysis. You've also got the ability to limit your repertorization very quickly just to mineral remedies or just to plant remedies, just to animal remedies. Uh, you've got these different uh, groupings of uh, types of remedies. So there's all kinds of different graphs that you can create uh, and analyze with. You've also got different repertorization strategies. And you can also design these strategies, and you can edit existing strategies. I won't go through that, but these are all different strategies. And you can literally create hundreds of different types of strategies, different ways of analyzing the case in front of you. Okay, let's go back now. This is a little bit just about the analysis window. Uh, let's go back now and just look quickly at the repertory window. And let me show you some other things that you can do there. So I'm going to close these windows, and here is my repertory window. And remember before, I was searching through the structure of the repertory. So you can search through the structure, but maybe uh, you want to limit the information in a particular chapter to just a certain type of information, because maybe you're looking for, for example, all the rubrics in the mind section of a particular repertory that have to do with being forsaken. Okay, well what you can do here is you can, you can either click over here, there's a keyboard command to go over here, and then you're in this little window over here, and let's say I can type in the word forsake, so F-O-R-S-A-K-E, and I type in forsake, and you will see that this limits my mind chapter of the complete 2015 repertory to just those rubrics which have the words forsake in them. And now you can see I can find all of the different rubrics that have forsake, and I can select these, okay? I can go through and I can, let's say I want uh, this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, 
and this one. Okay, I can select these and then I can simply drag them over to any clipboard that I want or I could hit enter and now you can see they're in that clipboard and I can immediately see a repertorization of those particular rubrics or I could combine that with other uh, chapters, other uh, clipboards as well and now you can see I've got uh, clipboards A and C being represented or I could just go back and just see clipboard B or any combination of things that I would like. So uh, again, very, very easy to do. Now there's another uh, unique feature of McRepertory that I'd like to show you, and it's called the, uh, uh, basically the themes feature, the themes palette. And this is a very interesting feature. Again, it's unique to the program, and it allows you to do something very interesting. So let's say, for example, I'll give you an example. Let's say that there's a big state fair, and uh, we're all together in a classroom. And my daughter is visiting from Boston, Massachusetts, and she's out in the fair, and there's 10,000, 20,000 people walking in the streets. And I want you to, I ask one of the students in the class to go out and find my daughter. And all I tell the student is that uh, the person likes to read romance novels and sometimes wears a yellow hat. Well, it's going to be very difficult for you to find my daughter because, first of all, you don't even know her gender. Uh, you don't know how short or tall she is. You don't know what color her hair is. Uh, you don't know uh, that she's in her mid-twenties. You don't know any of these things. So you're going to be looking at everybody in the crowd trying to determine, you know, who's got a romance novel and potentially wearing a yellow hat. Maybe they're wearing a yellow hat. Maybe they're not. Maybe they're carrying a romance novel. Maybe they're not. It's going to make it a lot more difficult for you. So if I had told you these general characteristics, these general themes or features of my daughter, like she's a girl, like she's 27 years of age, like she's got blonde hair, like she's five foot three, that would help you to immediately narrow down your choices so that you would only be looking at that category of person. And then from within that category, you'd be trying to find somebody who would have a yellow hat and be carrying a romance novel. Well, the program allows you to do essentially the same thing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on the little T in my clipboard and I'm going to uh, create a theme. And I'll create a theme called Money. Okay, so I'm going to call it Money and I'll click OK. And now you can see that added to clipboard B is this theme called Money. And you'll notice there's a zero to the right of where it says Money because there's no remedies in it yet. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and I'm going to go over to my repertory and I'm going to just put in some rubrics that have to do with money. Okay, so let's go find a few. So one might be uh, fear of poverty. So fear of poverty. And there you can see it. And I'm going to take fear of poverty and I'm going to drag it over to here. And I'm going to add it into money. And let's say another one is avarice. So I'm going to type in avarice. Okay. Oops. Wrong one. All right. So avarice. Okay, and here you can see Avarice, and I'm going to take Avarice, and I'm going to drag that over again, and I'm going to add that one in. And let's do another one, Greed Cupidity. So Greed Cupidity, there it is. And I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to add that one in as well. And now I've created this theme called Money. And what I'm saying here is that I want to first and foremost only consider those remedies that have to do, that have a big issue with money. This is actually very similar in a way to what uh, Jeremy Scher does in his Q repertory. In other words, I want to find only those, re those remedies that have a big issue with money. And if I now go to my analysis window, okay, and I go over here, you'll notice that I've got in my repertorization, let's do clipboard A, it might be a little bit more interesting. Uh, so we'll go to clipboard A, uh, and let's do clipboard B2, all right? And now you'll see that up here I've got all of my interesting rubrics and down here I've got this theme called money. And what this is saying is that it's first going to look at only the remedies that are in here under money, okay? And then secondarily it's going to look at the more characteristic or aphorism 153 striking, strange, peculiar signs and symptoms of the disease case. And uh, this is a, a lovely feature, and uh, you can play around with it. It's got some interesting little other capabilities where you can actually go and you can uh, look at the different types of uh, themes that are in there and do all kinds of interesting things with them. Okay, so that's the, the theme tool. Uh, I want to just show you uh, how easy it is to save information in this program. It's really, really easy. All you do is you, you just go over here to where it says File, and you create a new patient 
or you can type control or command plus the letter N. And you just go over here and we'll just uh, we'll call them sample patient uh, or sample case, perhaps. OK, sample case. Uh, and then we'll save that. OK, and here he is, sample case. And in here I can put in the patient information, first name, last name, uh, street address, city, state, zip code. I have these empty fields and I can actually name them things. So, for example, let's say, you know, uh, I'll call this one, for example, vitamins. Uh, so I can put in what vitamins he's taking. OK, and here you can see I've got vitamins, hobbies. I can put in what I can make it as many fields as I want. I can type all this information in here. Uh, and then all I need to do is to save anything, I simply click on the window I want to save. Here's the analysis window. Let me make this smaller so you can see it happen in, in real time here. So I'm going to move this over and here's the patient window. So all I do is I click on this window so it's active and then I type control or command S to save it and now you can see I've saved the repertory remedy graph over here. If I want to save clipboard A, I just click on that, I type in control S and I've saved that. If I had rubrics and clipboard 1, I could do that. If I had notes, I can actually type in my whole case. Let me show you that. I'm going to uh, open up a case here. Uh, well, these are real cases, so let me open one that's not a real case. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, okay. So, uh, our case is okay. All right, so here's a, a sample case. And I can highlight this whole case and I can copy it. And what I can do in my Mac repertoire is I can type my whole case right into the notes here. Or if I type them in another program, like a word processor, I could just copy and then paste the whole thing in. And here I've got my whole case right inside my notes. And if I want to save that, I just, again, I type Control or Command S. And you can see I saved the notes over here. And I can rename all this stuff. And this is all saved to today's date. Uh, and then when I want to come back to it, I just go back to this date uh, with these arrows. I find it. I can open up any clipboard, all the notes, all the cases, and I can save it all again. I can modify it uh, and save it to the new date. And it allows me to have total record of everything that's going on. I can even put in my analysis and my diagnosis, uh, di various diagnosis, the lab reports, uh, if I have a video, photos, um, what happened, aggravations, other free fields. Uh, I can also put in my plan of prescription as well. So I can put in what remedy was given, the potency, the pharmacy that was used, the prescription, the reasons I gave it, confidence, and I even have other blank fields that I can name as well. So you have a full record of everything that goes on. And the great thing, again, about this is just how absolutely ridiculously simple it is to use. It's super, super easy. Uh, really, all you have to do is just click on the window that you want to save, and then you just type Control S, or you go over here to where it says um, uh, Save, and you go ahead and you save it. And that's all there is to it. It's just nothing else to do. Okay, so that's the uh, patient chart. So I'll go ahead and close uh, some of these windows. Okay. Uh, the next thing I want to show you uh, is that you can also search not just uh, in this one repertory, but really in all the repertories. And the way that you can do that is you can either click on the search pull down menu and select remedies and words, or you can see the keyboard command here is control or command plus the letter F for find. Okay, so here I am in that window and I can search for a combination of words, for example. So I'm going to go over to words and I'm going to type in the word fear and then I'll type in the word dark and I'll click on search. And here you can see I've got 16 results in the mind section, one in the vision, and I'll stick that into one of my clipboards. And here you can see here are all the rubrics in the complete 2015 repertory that contain the words fear and dark. I'm going to go back to that window and maybe now I'm going to, let's say, get rid of the word dark. Okay, so I'll get rid of dark. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to the remedy side and I'm going to type in stromonium. Okay, and now what I'm doing is I'm searching for the remedy stromonium plus the word fear. And I'm going to go ahead and click on search, and now you can see I got 122 results in the mind section, one in speech and voice, three in respiration, one in cough, so on and so forth. I'm going to select them all. And I'm going to put them into this clipboard. And now you can see that I've pulled up all of the fear rubrics uh, in the complete 2000. 15 repertory that contain the remedy stromonium. And you'll notice that they're underlined differently. Some are underlined uh, two bold lines, some are underlined three times, some are underlined twice, some are underlined once. That's the degree of stromonium in these various rubrics. So it'll tell me that, for example, that under uh, mind fear, no, symptom number nine, mind fear night aggravates, 
with 149 remedies that that uh, has stramonium in bold type. And I can hit the spacebar key at any point and see all the remedies in these various rubrics. I'm going to go back to that particular window. And let's say um, I have a case, a patient, uh, and I pretty sure that for this particular patient that uh, one of the remedies they need is either stramonium, belladonna, or hyoscyamus. I'm sure, I'm confident that it's one of those three remedies. I'm not sure which one it is, but I know it's one of those three. And let's say that the center of pathology for this particular patient uh, is their fears. It's their fears that prevent them from leading a happy and a creative life. It's their fears, as Hahnemann writes in the ninth aphorism of the Organon, which prevents them from reaching the lofty goal of human existence. And I want to compare these three remedies and see which one is the best choice. Uh, and so let's say I want to compare the fears of stramonium, hyoscyamus, and belladonna. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to type in hyoscyamus and belladonna. And so now I've got the three remedies and the word fear. But if you look to the left of each of these remedies, you'll see there's a little plus. That means that I want to find the remedy in the rubrics that come up with the word fear. That means I'm going to find only those rubrics which contain fear plus these three remedies. But that's not what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the plus to the left of Hive Simons and make it a negative, and I'm going to click on the plus to the left of Belladonna and make it a negative. And now what I've got is all the rubrics that have the word fear that contain the remedy stramonium, but do not contain hot salmons and do not contain belladonna. And I'm going to go ahead and click on search, and I'm going to hit select all, and I'm going to stick them into my clipboard. And now what you've got here, uh, if we hit spacebar here, you can see that these are all rubrics which contain the remedy stramonium, but do not contain hyoscyamus and do not, do not contain belladonna. So for example, if my patient had a fear uh, where uh, he shrinks back on waking and a fear in the afternoon and a fear of being alone in the darkness and a fear of insects and bugs, well, then I would be more inclined to prescribe stramonium because those are fears that stramonium has that belladonna and hyoscyamus do not have. And you can go back and do this for the other remedies as well. I can go back here now and I can turn this to a plus and this to a negative and click on search again and I'll stick this into a different clipboard and now I've got the fears as you can see here of hyoscyamus but not stramonium and not belladonna and I'm going to do it one more time where I'll make this a negative and this a plus and I'll do search and I'll select them all and stick them into clipboard four and now these are the fears that belladonna has that stramonium and hyoscyamus do not have and I can very quickly compare the different fears. Here are the fears of belladonna, here are the fears of hyoscyamus, and here are the fears of stramonium. And this is a wonderful tool both for study and for clinical practice. I'll give you a clear example of how I use this. I had a patient who came in very warm-blooded whose chief complaint was diarrhea driving them out of bed in the morning. For those of you who know a little materia medica, you'll probably think of the remedy sulfur right away. Sulfur is got that as a big keynote. They, they're driven out of bed with their diarrhea, as opposed to the naturums, natrum ureaticum, uh, natrum sulfuricum, natrum carbonicum, where uh, basically they, they get up, and as soon as they get up and are out of bed, then they have to go to the bathroom. Whereas Thuya, for example, they get up out of bed and then they drink some tea, and as soon as they drink some tea, then they have to go to the bathroom, whereas sulfur is driven out of bed. Now, there are two other remedies that have this where they're driven out of bed, and that's the remedies aloe and podophyllum. And all three of those are warm-blooded remedies, or at least can be warm-blooded. And so what I did is I took those three remedies, and I put them into this little window here, this particular window, and I put the uh, aloe and sulfur and uh, podophyllum, and then I put over here under uh, words the word diarrhea, and I compared the diarrhea symptoms of these three remedies. And what I found was that aloe had a unique symptom. It was these jelly-like stools, uh, uh, jelly-like uh, stuff that was in the stool uh, that was unique to it, that was not found in sulfur, and that was not in podophyllum. And based on that individualization of aloe, I prescribed the remedy, and it worked beautifully in the case. And so you can see this has really useful clinical uh, practicality. Okay, another unique capability of micropertory that I'd like to show you is in the analysis graphs. And these are uh, unique in a variety of ways. First of all, they're incredibly uh, comprehensive. 
So you've got huge numbers of graphs. These are just the mineral maps alone. You've got mineral maps, you've got plant maps, you've got animal maps, you've got miasm maps, you've got the work of John Scholten, of Massimo Giovori, of Rajan Sankran. Uh, here they're all broken down into different categories. There's many, many different uh, graphs. And you can click on anything. Like if I wanted to limit my analysis to just the stage 15, I could click here and I could see what stage 15 was uh, like this. Um, and at any point I could just click on it and I could limit my analysis just those remedies that are in stage 15. Now the other really unique thing about this, because actually there are other programs that can do that, but what's unique about this is if you actually look at this uh, little chart here, you'll notice that some of the elements and some of the ser periods and some of the stages are more dark. And what that's actually telling you is that those remedies or those elements are being more highly considered in your repertorization. This is a dynamic representation of what's going on in your analysis. And this is unique. There is no other program that allows you to actually see which remedies are coming up higher in the analysis. So this is a, a very unique feature. And these are, you know, you can explore this uh, extensively. There's so much information in here uh, and really very, very useful. You can always, uh, hit the spacebar key and find other information about these things, all kinds of different models, and really a, a lifetime of exploration is available to you in this program. Okay, so that's the, uh, the graphs. Let's go back to the uh, analysis. And what I'd like to show you here is that the, the analysis and uh, uh, the repertory part of the software and the reference works part of the software are actually linked together. So I can actually go right from MIC repertory to reference works. So let's say, for example, let's go back to Hyacinthus. I want to know more about Hyacinthus. I can click on Hyacinthus and I can view the remedy and reference works. We'll do that in just a second. I can look at the keynotes. I can actually look at information on the internet about Hyacinthus. This takes you and gives you proving information. I can look at the substance information. I can look at the family information. Um, I can limit the window just to that remedy. And I can even see over here all of the different groupings which contain hyacinthus. And I've got all the different types of groupings. I have the Dahlgren taxonomical system of classification. I've got the Cronquist system. I've got the uh, 1998 angiosperm phylogeny group system. This is the system which is based on the DNA of the plants. This is what most biologists and naturalists use today. I can look at the miasms, Rajan's miasms, uh, Nordl's, Bjornold's miasms, Bentley's miasms, and Yak Yakir's, Michelle Yakir's, Massimo's groups, Vega's boxes, Pitcairn's families, there's just so much stuff that you can do, and you can literally limit your repertorization to any one of these groupings at any time. Maybe I want to just look at the Solanacea. I click on Solanacea, and now I'm only looking at the Solanacea in my repertorization. So again, an amazing number of things that you can do with all of this. Okay, so I'm going to undo that limitation, and what I'd like to show you now is that you can go from here directly into reference works. Remember, there's two parts to the software. There's the MIC repertory part, which contains all of your repertories, and then there's the reference works part, which contains all the different books, including Materia Medica, philosophy books, books on therapeutics, keynote books, and many other types of works. So I'm going to go ahead now and click on View Remedy and Reference Works, and you'll see that it now takes me over to Reference Works. Oops, okay. Let me do that again. I do one more time. All right. Anyway, so uh, what it does, it takes you over here, and you can see it'll show you Hyosiamus, and now it'll show you all the books that contain Hyosiamus. And I can go now, if I want to read about high science in Kent, I just type in Kent's lectures, and then I hit enter, and now I can read about high science in Kent's lectures. So uh, very uh, easy to use, and you can go right back and forth between the two programs. Matter of fact, you can do searches right inside reference works, and you can go back to McRepertory uh, and make rubrics out of those. Okay, so uh, here I am in reference works, and let, I don't have too much time left, so let me just show you what I think is probably the most powerful thing about reference works and really the thing that makes it unique um, and that is the ability to actually 
uh, do an analysis right inside the Materia Medica. You can do all kinds of things. You can bookmark things here. You can see I add a little bookmark here, and now I can go to another book uh, over here. Uh, let's go to another place, uh, King's Headaches, for example, and I'll, and I'll bookmark that. Uh, and I'll make a little bookmark there, and I can go to another book, uh, let's say links over here under cases, and I'll bookmark that. And then what I can do is I can literally go back and forth and look at all the things that I bookmarked. So if I'm doing research or study, I can go back and forth and look at all these different items. So that's a really cool feature. But really what is the most powerful and unique capability is the ability to, to do an analysis right inside the Materia Medica. Uh, yes, you can repertorize. But the advantage of being able to analyze inside the Materia Medica is there's a couple of advantages. One is you'll find much more information than you would in the corresponding rubric in the repertory. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go ahead and search for the symptoms fear and dark. So I'm going to type in the word fear and dark, and I'm going to go ahead and search for that. And you'll notice that I came up over here, it says 201 remedies, 201 remedies. Now, if I go back to McRepertory, oops, if I go back to McRepertory, uh, here I am in McRepertory, and now uh, I go to that same rubric, so mind fear of dark, you'll notice there's 106 remedies. So when I look in the rubric of the complete 2015 repertory for the symptom fear of the dark, I only find 106 remedies. When I do that search in reference works, I find 201 remedies. In other words, almost double the number of remedies contained in the program. So imagine how much more information that's in our Materia Medicas that has never been transposed over into the rubrics of our repertories. That means you can find a lot more information. The other really big advantage is that sometimes a patient will come in and they'll tell you a symptom and you'll think, wow, this is the perfect aphorism 153, striking strange characteristic sign and symptom of the disease. How peculiar, how fantastic. I'm going to go look at that rubric in the repertory and I'm going to find that remedy and there can't be too many because it's such a weird symptom and you go and look in the repertory and that rubric doesn't exist. It just it's not there and you don't know what to do. Well, sometimes you can go right into the Materia Medica and you can find these really unusual symptoms in the original provings, whereas they've never been actually put into the actual repertory. So let me show you how you can uh, do this type of thing. Okay, so I'm going to actually do an analysis now right inside of reference works. So let's say I want to do, uh, I'm going to put, I'm going to create three symptoms, okay? Uh, let's say fear of the dark, dreams of birds, and also other, in, other uh, birds like chickens and let's say peacocks, okay? Um, and then pain in the leg, especially the shin, the calf, and the, uh, the thigh, okay? So I'll start by typing in fear uh, of the dark. Okay, and then I'm going to put that in the same remedy as dream of birds, and then I put that in the same remedy as pain in the leg. Okay, and uh, again, I'm going pretty fast here, uh, but you can basically see uh, what I'm doing. Okay, and if I do the search now, I'm going to come up with some results, but the problem is that I'm not going to come up with everything that I want because sometimes uh, fear is not the way that that symptom is expressed in the Materia Medica. For example, if you look at Hahnemann's Materia Medica Pura and you try to find the symptom fear of snakes, you won't find it because he says dread of snakes or dread of serpents. So I might want to add some synonyms here. So I'm going to click after the word fear and I'm going to click on the ampersand sign and now you can see all these other words. Oh, here's the word afraid. Let me add that so I can add the word afraid. And if I scroll down, I can see the word dread. So I'm going to click on dread and I'm going to add that. And uh, maybe I scroll down a little bit further and I find uh, the word, uh, let's say, startle, and I'll add that. So I can add whatever once, or I can add whatever word I would like, okay? So I could click in here and I could add the word uh, terror, okay? So, so uh, fear or startle or dread or afraid or terror within three words of dark and the same remedy is dream within three words of bird. And I could click on after the word bird and click on the ampersand sign. And here you can see I can add a, a goose, I'll add that, and I could add chicken, I'll add that, and I'll add peacock, 
and I can add whatever words I want. And I can do this for any of these words here. Here's the word leg. I can click after the word leg. I'll click on the ampersand sign, and I'll add calf, and I'll add uh, thigh. Okay, so these are related words. I have more general words I can choose from, more specific words, has parts, is part of, uh, words that start the same way, that sound like that word. There's all kinds of different options, even with little definitions at the bottom of what these words mean. So you can do, you know, these incredible, um, very sophisticated types of searches, and then all you have to do is hit enter, and now here are the results, and you can see 152 references with eight remedies, and these are the eight remedies that actually have uh, uh, fear of the dark, uh, dream of birds, and a pain in the leg, thigh, and calf. And uh, again, if you tried to repertorize doing this, you would come up with a much smaller number of remedies. So this allows you to come up with a much greater amount of information. And just like in McRepertory, this has the same type of information that you have in reference works. So in other words, you have your clipboards, you have different clipboards that you can put your information in. Uh, you can do an analysis of this as well. Uh, let's go over here and we'll do an analysis. Okay, oh, we're in clipboard D, I want to go to clipboard A, and here's my analysis. And you can see, uh, here's that first symptom that I did, fear within three words of dark. Let me make this bigger. This is a kind of a crazy search here, but you can see fear within three words of dark with 199 remedies, and then I've got fear or startle or dread or afraid or terror within three words of dark in the same remedy as, I need to make it even bigger, the same remedy as, and then you can see all the particular remedies that have come up. And I can actually take these rubrics, I can take this rubric here, and I can actually go over here and click and uh, export the rubric. And then I can actually go over to my McRepertory program. And I can go to any of my clipboards. And I can actually paste this rubric right into my McRepertory software. So again, I can do, I can go right from the analysis window in McRepertory. And I can go right from there into ReferenceWorks. Or I can be in ReferenceWorks. And I can create rubrics, and I they can export those rubrics into McRepertory and use them in that software. So the information is easily transmitted back and forth between the two different software programs. Okay, final thing I want to show you is that there is extensive help in this program. If you click on help here, you can see there's a whole manual. Here is the McRepertory manual online, and you can open it up, and you can search through it, and you can find all kinds of uh, interesting for information. You can do word searches, and uh, here is the manual. You've got your McRepertory manual, uh, classic manual, and your professional manual. You can open these up. You can do word searches through them, and all that information is available. Uh, for people, just so you know, this program is used by m most of the really top-level homeopaths in the world. Uh, here is the testimonial page uh, on the Whole Health Now website. You can see we have so many testimonials, Andre Sane, Joseph Kelsky, Richard Pitcairn, Roger Morrison, Miranda Castro, Franz Vermoulin, Massimon Giavori, Divya Shabra, Jan Scholten, Yu Lu Klein, Grant Bentley, Linda Johnston, Misha Norland, uh, and Annette Snivellet, Mahesh Gandhi, Rajan Sankran, Jaya Shah, Anashad, Nancy Herrick, Rena Markovitz, Bill Gray. It's just, you know, a, a who's who, Christina, who's who of the top level teachers today who are practicing and teaching homeopathy. And so you can see how many of them endorse the use of McRepertory. And I think the reason is that it's extremely stable. Uh, it, you don't, it rarely crashes. I use it, I beat on it all day long, using it for, for teaching classes, for preparing um, uh, 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 materials for my own practice. And uh, rarely do I have any types of problems with it. It's, 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 a, it's a stable, fully mature program. Uh, everything, all the different features work. You can edit. You can add your own keynotes. You can add your own remedies to your rubrics. You can copy your notes and paste them into the program. And there's just, it's so much that you can do. I'm really only, I'm not really even doing it justice. I'm, there's so much more that the software can do. The only way to fully appreciate all of its capabilities is to uh, really sit down and come to one of the you know, six-hour trainings that I do, and then you get an, a sense of the incredible power of the program without its compromising of any of its ease of use. 
Again, incredibly intuitive, incredibly easy to use, at the same time, extremely powerful. Uh, so that's the, a, a very quick overview. Again, I, I can't cover everything in the program. If you want more information, you can send me an email to kim at synergyhomeopathic.com. Again, that's kim at synergyhomeopathic.com. Uh, you can write me there. If you're interested in purchasing the software uh, or you want to uh, get more information, you can write to me there. We do have some incredible new features that are coming out. Uh, one that I'm particularly excited about is the Materia Medica Pura project. This is a project that's been going on for uh, more than a decade, I think 15, 16 years now. Uh, it's being spearheaded by Andre Sane, and it's essentially a continuation of the work of our stalwarts, people like Herring uh, and Hahnemann and Timothy Field Allen. And basically what uh, uh, Andre Sane and his team have been doing is they've been going through and scouring the literature, uh, finding all of the important information associated with our remedies, much of which is simply absent from our Materia Medica today. This is invaluable information if you want to have the highest level of success in practice. All of this information is going to be added into uh, reference works. Uh, actually, we have the first monographs that are being added very soon. I'm personally extremely, extremely excited about this. Uh, the, the, the use of the, the Burning House and Therapeutic Pocketbook Repertory, the incredible work of Andre Sane being added, uh, all the other work of all the other uh, top-level homeopaths that's being contributed really sets this program apart. It, it just makes it uh, unique uh, in terms of the full functionality that you can get out of it. I'm just going to quickly see. We've got a few minutes left. I know I've been speaking very quickly here. I had a lot I wanted to say in, in the short period of time. So let me just quickly see if there are any questions that anybody has. Uh, okay. Where are the clipboards? I don't see the clipboards. Uh, let me just show you uh, in the repertory. Uh, the clipboards are over here, A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here you can see I have open clipboard B. So here are the clipboards. Uh, the remedies, there's different analysis strategies, so it depends on which strategy you're using. So, uh, for example, the number of rubrics is the strategy which shows you which remedy covers the most number of rubrics in the case. Small remedies, you can see this, gives emphasis to those remedies which are not properly or poorly represented in the repertory. Um, small rubrics gives emphasis to rubrics which are smaller in size. One that's a very interesting one is prominent remedies. That's when you have a remedy in a high degree in a small rubric. So, for example, if you have the rubric Mind Hatred Unmoved by Apologies, uh, there's only one remedy in that rubric, Nitricum Acidum in bold type. If you had selected that rubric because it's so prominent, it would move nitric acid up the list. Or, for example, perhaps you chose the rubric um, Delusion, He is the Object of God's Vengeance. Again, only one remedy in that rubric, Cali Bromatum. It's in bold type, so if you had selected that rubric it would, and you had selected the analysis strategy called prominence, it would give emphasis to that particular remedy. Uh, there's a lot to learn about all this stuff. Um, yes, again, I know people are saying that uh, uh, they want to know more in depth. Again, go back to my uh, training, to the Whole Health Now webpage. And go here under the software section, software video tutorials, and here you can see I've got many, many different uh, tutorials. They're all about 90 minutes. The first one's called An Introduction to McRepertory Reference Works, Using McRepertory Reference Works to Solve Your Cases, Advanced Features of McRepertory Reference Works, The Burning House and Repertory, uh, Part 2 of Advanced Features, The Vexation Rubrics by Dr. Jamie Oskin. Here's one that I'm doing now, Homeopathic Case Analysis Using McRepertory Reference Works, Studying Materia Medica Using Homeopathic Software. Uh, so there's a lot, and we're, we're doing more and more all the time. So many, many, that's the other thing, tremendous after-sales training and support services. You get a lot uh, we really help you to learn how to use this program and get the most out of it. Let's see if I have time for one more question. Uh, somebody asked me about the Academy Edition. The Academy Edition does not have all of the functionality that I've shown you, uh, and it also has a much smaller library. But the nice thing about the Academy Edition is that the money you invest into it can be used and applied to any other package at a later time. So it's you know $395, but you have two years to use the program and any 
time during that two year period, you can take that $395 and you can apply it to one of our other packages. In other words, you don't lose your investment at all. And so if you're just starting off and you want to just get your feet wet with the program, you can do that. And then uh, you don't lose any of that investment whatsoever. Okay, so I hope that uh, this was helpful to people. Uh, and that, uh, again, if you have any questions, you want more information, please contact me at my email address here. If you're interested in purchasing the software, again, you can, you can uh, write to me at this location. Or if you just have questions about the program in general, I'd be happy to help you. Wish everybody a very good evening. I hope this was useful to you. And look forward to uh, participating with all of you at some future session that we are, are doing. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.